And welcome to today's episode of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi, and oh, do we have a good show for you today. We have a focused guest, which means we're going to dedicate the entire show to talking with Peter D. G. M. R. Marino. Peter D. G. Or Mar- Marino. I know the name. I've been saying it countless times. Here I am on the radio show. I'm falling. Hey, hey, Paisan. He's the principal of the Taliban. But before we get there, let me tell you, this business talk show airs live on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 4 p.m. And Thursdays at our special time. Heard exclusively here on Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. If you're listening to this show as a podcast, we do encourage you to listen live during our broadcast times. The show is brought to you by our advertisers, Brandman University, Center Club, Commercial Bank of California, Decision Toolbox, MBN Design, Smart Business Magazine, SNH Rubber, Succession Strategies, Tone Software, and UPS Protection. The goal for this show is to help you, our listening audience of CEOs running middle market firms, to improve your decision making skills. Peter, welcome to the program. Thanks, good to be here. Let's start simply. Tell us a little bit about your professional background. Maybe we should start even more simply. It's Peter D. I like it. <laughs> Just stick Thank with you. Peter D. Hey, make a friend of the host. All right. So I grew up in the, outside of Boston, in a historic town of Lexington, Massachusetts, the eldest of a, of a large family. I was the oldest of an entire generation on my father's side. Wow. And I went on to the University of Massachusetts, mm-hmm. where I had a triple major in computer science, economics, and math. And then on to the Sloan School of Business. Is that typical? No. And it was a highly uh, engineered major. Okay. Because I wanted to take computer science, and there was no other way to do it back then because there were no undergraduate programs in computer science. So by taking the interdisciplinary major, I was able to architect my own major where I essentially took all the master's class for computer science as Mm. part of my undergraduate experience and also got a math major and an economics major at the same time. Wow. So it was a good way to get going. And then right on to the Sloan School, studied uh, computers again and also uh, strategy and organization development. And right out of the Sloan School, I got recruited by a company that was really a startup. It was a couple hundred people in the Washington, D.C. area. But I didn't want to go to Washington. I wanted to go to San Francisco. So I went to their West Coast office. It had just opened up. So there were only 13 people there. Mm. So it was like a startup within a startup. That's and exciting. We had to figure out by ourselves how to make things go. You know, We figured out that you know, if we could sell business, we might actually get to keep our jobs. Right. So we were highly motivated. And sure enough, over 20 years, my part of that business grew to be 2,000 people worldwide. And 10 years into that experience, um, I ended up going back to headquarters in D.C. and helped to grow the whole company to 10,000 people and a billion dollars over 20 years. Wow, what a story. Yeah. What's the name of the it's, It was called American Management Systems. It's since been sold to a Canadian company, but it uh, had a good run, and it's still a good company. A lot of good people there. It's nice to be able to have that experience, huh? I mean, you, you get to see both ends of it, right? Startup days and... Yeah, and you get to experience it all, and I figured out through that what part I like best. And what part is that? Well, it wasn't the startup. The startup to me is a squirrel cage. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's a lot of high energy, a lot of things going on. It's, but once you've got something going, it really excites me to take something little and make it big. Right. So I, I like to work with organizations that have got something that want to make it a lot. Okay. I don't go from nothing to something, I go from something to a lot, because the game changes right there. Nice. And I've heard you say that on other interviews, right. and, and I think we always look for teachable moments here on the radio show. You listen to Critical Mass Radio Show, and I'm speaking with Peter D., who is the principal at Intellivent, and the idea that you can give your, ba- your brand promise, or at least your messaging consistently, repeatedly, I think is very powerful, because right. it, it then frames who might be clients for you, right? right? And where your expertise resides. Right. Perfect. All right, let's continue the conversation. So tell me about the firm. Uh, how did you... Uh, tell me about Intellivan. Well, first, first after 20 years at American Management Systems, where I thought I had figured out a lot of things about making an organization perform and grow according to a plan, I, I really felt like I wanted to run a whole company I was really only running a very large business unit, helping to run a whole company. Mm -hmm. So I got myself recruited to run a $200 million software product company that was eventually bought by Oracle. And after that, I I wanted to take what I thought I'd figured out, because it seemed to be pretty good, um, and and help other people do what I had done only in their own organizations. But I wasn't quite sure yet that 
what I had was sort of industry strength yet. Right. It still looked a little bit too much like, well, that's what you did at AMS. Uh -huh. So um, I, I systematically began a process of um, entering different companies at different stages of evolution, different markets, different technologies, some services, some software, some SaaS, some telecom, some retail, some banking, some government. Uh, you're a year or so with a number of different companies and, and then honed and refined and tuned my content, if you will, mm -hmm. to the point where I felt comfortable that, hey, this stuff really is going to work. And that's when I stepped out and started doing, under the name of Intelliven, what, what we do now, which is we, we, we like to say we invest in, in helping companies grow and perform according to a plan. But we don't invest money. We invest uh, wisdom, knowledge, experience, and excellence. Mm -hmm. And um, that's because if you invest money, the people who are managing the money, the operators, now need to manage you as a source of funds. You have, they have to convince you that they're doing responsible things with what you've invested in generating that return. Right. Whereas what we wanted to do was be on the side of management and help them do wise and smart things with, what, with, with their organization, with whatever money had been invested. And to do that, we couldn't be the ones putting the money in. So we do like to take equity. And we do like to enjoy the returns that come with generating success. And we do invest a little bit from time to time, okay. but not, uh, that's not why people work with us. So it sounds like your experience prior to a Televent was very diverse across a bunch of different industry by segments. Design. By design. And so is that now replicated inside the business? Well, by the way, you said stages, but also uh, markets and okay. business models. Okay. So it's all three different stages of evolution, so that would mean you know small, medium, large, but not startup, right. and not over a billion. So we're, right. we're sort of in that range. Um, and also- A couple you know, million to- A couple million all the way up to several hundred million. Got it. Um, generally speaking. A lot of companies. A lot of companies. So what's the point of doing a startup if you can't get it to you know 25 up to 50 on the way to 500, right? Okay. That's where we specialize. Um, what was your question beyond that? Industries. Yeah. Are you doing that now within the Most firm? of our clients are um, in, in tech in some form, either with a product or a service, and, and they could be consulting, they could, be, they could have generated a software product, uh, and, and their, their customers will be large organizations from either government or telecom or finance. Okay. Uh, so our customers' customers are in those industries. Our customers, our clients, are organizations that serve those larger markets. And many times those companies are competing against much larger companies. I right. Would. And, uh, and our strategy is basically to find a niche that you can dominate. Okay. And then, and then bl blow it away. Okay. But it's a focus point. Pick something that's big enough to be exciting and interesting and then blow it away. Do you find um, the technology sector to have <clears throat> unique differences that makes your model work? Is it because you're in, uh, you have a background and an affinity and experience there? Um, do you find technology companies have the potential to grow more yeah. quickly than other companies? What is it about the technology uh, sector? Well, it's, it, the reality is I'm comfortable with it. There's plenty going on there, and why not? Right? Okay. It needs the help, and I'm, I'm there, and I, we enjoy it. Uh, it. Our stuff works in, in any market. We have some clients that are in retail uh, and, and, and in other niches, but mm -hmm. we don't focus on that. We don't go out and look for that because it's so much easier to look for tech because it's hot, it's here. Uh, not very many people are that good at what we do in tech, and so it's a good place to focus. Excellent. All right. So again, doing what we tell our clients to do, focus. Right, focus, have a niche. Right. Okay, so we're talking with Peter D. He's principal at Intellivent, and you're listening to Critical Mass Radio Show. We're going to take our first commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to start talking about some of the intellectual property that Peter has contributed to the, to the space, which is, uh, the title is Manage to Lead, The Seven Truths to Help You Change the World. So we're going to talk a little bit about that when we return in our next segment. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after these words from our commercial sponsors. Can we talk about your family business? You know, that thing you put your whole life's blood, sweat, and tears into? Well, what happens when you retire or try and pass that business on to your children? At Succession Strategies, we can help you find the answers. We'll guide you through the unsettling process of protecting your family legacy and successfully passing your business on to the next generation, safely and securely, ensuring that it'll both survive and thrive for generations to come. So ask yourself just one question. Can I really afford to wait? 
take the first step. Take our complimentary self-assessment at SuccessionStrategies.com or call us at 714-560-9022 to set up a free consultation at your convenience. That's Succession-Strategies.com. Today's businesses are embracing voice over IP telephones and unified communication desktop technologies to more effectively communicate and collaborate with their customers, suppliers, and colleagues. The Reliatel management software from Tone Software Corporation helps organizations of all sizes manage their communications technologies to ensure great voice quality and better levels of service and reliability throughout their business. Through Reliatel, you'll gain higher return on investments from VoIP and unified communications technologies while lowering the associated operational support and maintenance costs. Learn more. Visit www.tonesoft.com or call 800-833-8663 for information on Reliatel by Tone Software, the solution for quality business communications. Commercial Bank of California, or CBC, is a well-funded, full-service bank located in the heart of Orange County. CBC is ranked in the top 6% nationally for financial strength. Commercial Bank of California was founded in 2003 by a group of Orange County's finest entrepreneurs. To this day, our bank is governed by our founders, including General William Lyon of William Lyon Homes, Alex Morello of the Morello Group, and Frank Willey of Fidelity National Financial, to name a few. In short, we are a bank founded, built, and run by entrepreneurs, for entrepreneurs. Not every business in Orange County should be our customer. However, if your business is looking for a bank that can assist in finance, production, analytics, and risk management, there's no better bank to choose. To understand the true power of how Commercial Bank of California can help you achieve your goals, give us a call at 714-431-7000 or visit us on the web at www.cbcal.com or at our new headquarters at 19752 MacArthur Boulevard in Irvine. Member FDIC. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi. Peter D. G. Amarino is our guest. He's principal of the Televan, and we're talking about a variety of subjects, and we'll be getting into... Uh, some some IP that he's developed and a talk that he gives and information he shares on Manage the Lead, the Seven Truths to Help You Change the World. But before we get there, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your point of differentiation. Why do clients pick your firm in Televan? Sure. Well, we have level set on what we do. First of all, we, we help leaders get clear about what it is they really want to do and then make sure that what they spend their time actually doing is in sync with that. And it, it turns out a lot of people say they want to do uh, something specific, but then spend a lot of energy on other things. We help align their top teams around uh, what they really have decided they want to do. And ultimately, that helps to fulfill the potential to perform and grow, which is what the whole thing is all about. Um, the way we do it is work with the top team, get clear about what they want to do, and then figure out how to govern and guide operations so that it comes out to do what they say they want to do. And generally, the organizations we work with in most startups are good at what they do, at the core of what they do. And as they're successful and as they grow, they need to be good at a few other things that typically don't necessarily have the skills to do. For example, something to do with finance or marketing or or organization or operations. And it turns out usually, in addition to being good at what they do, they're good at one or two of those things, but not all three. So what we do is bring that third or the second and third competencies to the table. How do you do that? We, we could insource it as a, a part-time COO okay. or on a project basis to just inject a, a plan or a governance process, uh, provide sort of a board in a box, and, and become the point of authority and consisting of governance for, mm-hmm. for what's going on. And what makes us different from others that do that uh, is that we've successfully done it many times ourselves in the role of the person that we're helping. Okay. And, and most successful executives who have done what we have been successful at doing, spend their time doing it over and over and over again. Right. And why yeah. not, right? right? You can just right. keep on being successful. And, but, and those that do step back and provide help tend to have overgeneralized that which they did to help them be successful wherever they were. Mm. So they haven't had the base of experience across many different situations and then consolidated those across a whole. Uh, the second thing is that 
we actually have been successful in different markets, different industries, different stages. So we have learned those lessons and we've packaged them and organized them into content which becomes useful to others through our proprietary approach and repository of IntelliVen which is cases, content, templates, work problems, right. and you know, all, all that goes with uh, ultimately packaged into the book. So Peter, I want to go back up to the top. Um, what Describe for our audience the process that helps your clients get clear on what they really want to do. Well, it's interesting. I, you know, you say the very essence of a business, according to Peter Drucker, so the father of a lot of management th science, is the purpose of a business is to solve a problem for a customer. So that begs three questions. Who's the customer? What problem do they have? And what's your solution? Right? So those are three interesting dimensions to any business by definition. So the most interesting way to get to the heart of the matter is to ask the CEO and each member of the top team separately to answer three questions. Whose problem do you solve how? <laughs> and you, and Sorry, a, you know, that sounds so simple, it right? Is. And there's a template on the site right. and in the book which you can activate, build it out. It sends back to you what you sent in. It sends it to me and my team. And then what we can do is look at the different answers from, its, from the team. Because it's your experience, you get different answers from the team. We always do. Always, always do. do. It never comes out the same. But there are usually some similarities. So let's but what's, hope. what's usually surprising is the subtle differences, which are basically getting in the way of right. being... Clotting your message. And right. And, and if you have three strong players that are each extraordinarily good at what they do, but they're pulling even slightly in different directions, they're losing energy. They're wasting energy. Right. right. And confusing their staff. So a facilitated process would help them consolidate to get to the same answer. Not necessarily the right answer or a best answer, but the same answer, okay. which is worth a lot. Right. right. As long as all three of us are on the same page, now we can start working together and now we can refine it and we'll refine it together to get to good, better, best answers. Okay. Simple as that. All right. And, and by the way, that takes a long time. I was going to say. It's way a yeah, lot harder to do than it sounds. Right. Most organizations we work with take something between six and 18 months to get that answer across the top person, trio, say a gang of five plus the board uh -huh. um, and, it, and it's not something you do overnight no matter how many times our clients uh, overachievers that they are want to just go home and fix it right um, it usually is a subtle long sure um, thoughtful process and every day you're better for having worked on it right but uh, it takes time and you'll get it right and it'll be great yeah it's it's interesting because when that entrepreneur if she or he is still involved in the company when that business was started I would think those three answers are pretty clear yeah, well, you can almost imply them. Whatever it is you're doing, you can sort of draw it out. But then you start to, you're, especially if you're a startup person, you saw an opportunity and you did something, you see something else, you do something else. And all of a sudden you start to right. have many flowers blooming. And the question is, which one do you want to turn into a bush? Okay. And when you bring people in, they have slightly different views on what the message is and the story gets retold. And, and it usually starts when they got there. Right. <laughs> So, so just that process, I would think, is highly valuable to your clients, right? Absolutely. To have congruence and, uh, and purpose and clarity and, on those three right. questions. And to be thoughtful and purposeful and consciously decide as opposed to just whatever, whatever. Right. Take, it's working, why question it, right? Right. Uh, just by working together to get to a common answer, you've improved the lot and added value to the company uh -huh. because you've given it focus, you've given it clarity, consistency, alignment, and you'll start to see performance goes better, it's easier to bring people on, easier to get the people on board working in the right in the way you want them to to be effective. Right. So let's let's move on. Now we're talking with Peter D. He is principal at Intellivan. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio Show and he is our focused and featured guest for today. We have him for the entire hour and so I'm very excited. We're taking our time and moving through his his content. So in 2012, you were the Bateman Scholar in Residence at University of Massachusetts. You right. gave a talk, Managed to Lead, The Seven Truths to Help You Change the World. Let's start there. Can, okay. you, can you share some of the major takeaways from that talk? Sure. Leading up to the talk, which gave me the content upon which to base the talk, and I think what, one of the reasons that UMass was interested in having me as a scholar was that American University in um, Washington, D.C. had asked me to put together a course for master's students in organization development to share with them whatever it was I apparently had figured out and learned about helping organizations perform and grow because they had noticed a lot of success and there was some pattern to what I was doing but it wasn't really organized in a way it could be shared with others. So they, they, hired, they actually had me prepare a, a class, a course, a 38-hour class wow. course 
and it was interesting because you know the st I had slides right to take people through the material and script for the slides and the students said why do you why do you have the slides in the script why don't you just give us the slides and the script in writing and we can read it and we can use class time more productively to work through the <laughs> stuff rather than listen to you talk <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a pretty good hey, idea. Kids, that's hey, a good idea. Yeah, I, I guess that's why they write books. <laughs> <laughs> Up to then, I never. I, I, I just thought books were very heavy business cards. You know, and, and what more, a concept. More about the ego gratification for those who wrote them, got to give them away. Um, but finally, you know, my daughter said, "Give it up. Finally, just write the damn book." And I did. Okay. Um, and it was, um, it, it was a book to go with the course. But even with thirty-eight hours of material and and the book, the hard part was how do you take somebody through it in an hour so the Bateman program gave me the opportunity and the responsibility actually to take 38 hours of classroom material down to a 50 minute summary mm. which you know the shorter the message has to be the more organized it gets and the clearer right. you get and the higher you know order it becomes and the crisper your thinking exactly. has to be right so so that pushed pushed us to get to that point um, and then, and then, of course, the other thing that it did was it forced me to take the graphics to the next level because I, I had had mm -hmm. um, a lot of you know Peter D hand drawings that needed to get pushed up to something that actually anybody could look at and like not just my mother. Right. So um, it was it was a good process for that. I had professional designers and graphics persons uh, get the pictures that I was trying to draw into a form that would be suitable mm -hmm. for 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 representation. And then the third thing that was really helpful about that opportunity was I was taking the material not to business people or uh, master students, but pretty much you know undergraduates and lay people, people who weren't necessarily interested in business, but, hmm. but still you know, in the audience and part of that whole process. Who whole want program. to be entertained as well as educated. Yeah, you, know, you know, I have to make the points a little simpler. The questions they ask are very telling. You know, it, it, it sort of helped pull it apart and say, well, why do they ask that question? That must mean I didn't get it across quite right. So I was able to get a lot of feedback. That, you know, basically they say, also another, I found out another reason to write a book is your content gets better. It Cause, does, Because you it? have to keep sharing it with others, getting their reaction, and then working on it some more, and it keeps moving forward. Right. And up and up and up. Right. So, so when they when they selected you to be the Bateman Scholar in Residence, what did that entail? Well, what did it entail to be the Scholar in yeah. Residence? Well, what it meant was I got to spend um, three three days on campus, pretty much full full schedule with different student groups, where they had basically some of them were a couple of classes, a couple of student groups, the after school type things, where they had asked my my content to come into the classroom and to interact intimately with a small group of students. Okay. And it culminated in a 200 and something person lecture. So it was the culminating experience and then a dinner. Mm -hmm. um, so, it was, so it was a rigorous sort of three or four days of, of you know, ramp up, conduct, wind down, and then a y almost you know months and months before that, getting the material to the point where it could be shared in that way. Right. So it's an immersion and it's an honor. And you know, it, 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 different people do different things with that. If you look at what others, other scholar, Bateman scholars have done, but for me, it was an opportunity to do just what I've described here. You know, take decent content and pu push it up a bit and share it, share it in a lot of different forums. Little, you know, little twists and turns here and there because it was focusing on different specifics in the different forums to try to play into the class or the group that was asking me to participate. To it sounds both exciting and exhausting. Oh, exhausting. <laughs> Definitely right. exhausting. Yeah, You're yeah. on for three days, exactly. right? And, and people want to know what you know and right. ask you questions. You know, I think you can slide through it and not you know, not really care, but I put I put myself on the front line and said, you know, I'm going to get everything I can get out of this. So right. you know, I acti also activated the website and all the social media around it, so all, all that kind of kicked in at the same time. And wh why not, right? Make, make the most of it. Did it spark any interest in being a professor or instructor uh, or a well, scholar and a different... Well, that combined with the AU experience basically taught me that I'm not really professor. My whole career, people have called me the professor because I basically run and develop businesses by developing people and teams. Okay. So they call me the professor, but when I actually spent time in the <laughs> professor role, I, it turns out a really great professor helps students come into contact with material and consider it relative to other similar but different yes, material. Yes, right. I'm not so interested in other different <laughs> material. <laughs> I'm I make my own material. Stuff, right. I figure this stuff out. It's gold. <laughs> Which is very good and Lucky very useful. Honesty. Yeah, it's, I had to come to terms with that. And there are forms where that's perfectly appropriate. I've now been invited to teach at uh, University of San Francisco. Mm. And I'll be taking the course there as well. And you know, even though, despite what I just said, 
I think it's a good, in, a good thing. It's in the master's program for organization development. The content is really good. It is rooted in the depths of OD, okay. but it's an elective. So you don't okay. have to take it. If you want to take it and be exposed to it, it's there for you. Right. And I'm hoping many students will, and they will enjoy it. And, and that'll be which semester then? Uh, it's actually, it's, a tri it's, in it's intercession in January okay. at, the, um, at the USF. The other thing I'm hoping is that the content will become accessible to other teachers of other courses, and it will be some of the content they bring in. Mm. As a, as, you know, just a piece here and there, right. and, and use you know, one chapter, one work problem, one case, one, one template or diagram, uh, rather than taking the whole book. I mean, I'd love to take the whole book, but I think it would be easier to use it as a, a resource across many courses, not just one. Right. And maybe that's a model for other colleges and universities beyond uh, San Francisco, huh? Hopefully, hopefully. All right. Well, you heard it here first on Critical Mass Radio Show. We're talking with Peter D., his principal at the Taliban. We're going to take our second commercial break. We're going to continue our conversation uh, about Manage the Lead, Seven Truths to Help You Change the World. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back after these words from our commercial sponsors. What it would feel like to lose everything your job your home your family your dignity this has happened to thousands of the men women veterans and young adults we serve at working wardrobes what do we do to help we provide career development services life skills workshops job skills training we provide the perfect interview outfit and we get clients placed in jobs call working wardrobes 714-210-2460 donate volunteer invest hire if you are an Orange County CEO or a business owner, this message is for you. Do you ever feel isolated with no place to turn for advice or feedback? Who holds you accountable to your commitments in your company? Where do you find the right resources to help you and your company grow? If you have had these questions, then Critical Mass for Business might be the answer for you. Critical Mass for Business is committed to helping you make better decisions through the power of peer learning. These are groups of peers who are running businesses just like you. CEO Peer Groups provides a great sounding board to test fresh ideas and new concepts, review your strategic plans and tactical goals, and present issues and opportunities for a critical discussion. The result is improved strategy, accountability, and improved business results. If you are interested in learning more, go to www.criticalmassforbusiness.com and learn about our CEO peer groups. CEO peer groups is a registered trademark of Critical Mass for Business. SH Rubber is a manufacturing company in Fullerton, California. We specialize in custom molded, extruded, and stamped rubber parts. If your next job requires a rubber part, we would appreciate the opportunity to quote on it. We serve aerospace, automotive, and many other industries. We work with many types of rubber, including silicone, EPDM, neoprene, uninitrile, and viton. Our quality system is ISO and AS9100 approved. Over our 47 years in business, the SNH brand has become known for superior quality, quick turnaround, and competitive pricing. Please check out our website at www.shrubber.com or call 714-525-0277. Let SNH be your ceiling solution. You're listening to Critical Mass Radio Show, and I am your host, Rick Franzi. Our featured and focused guest for today is Peter D.G. Amarino. He is principal at Intellivan, and we've been talking about many things in leadership, development, taking companies with something and making them into much more than that, and that's uh, only a part of what we're going to be talking about. Let's get back to um, the major takeaways from your talk. Can, can you share a little bit about what you shared both in your book and in your talk and what you're doing as you continue to kind of talk from the book and the content, Peter? Sure. I mean, you... I'm just I mean, looking for a takeaway from what, what, what are some of the seven truths to help you change the world? Right. Well, we talked about one, which is getting clear. Okay. Right. So it's be clear about whose problem you solve, and then it's how you solve it, and then how well you solve it, right? And then after that becomes get, um, get aligned. So once you have sort of in mind a certain place to go, you've got to get other people on board to go into the same place. So we talked even a little bit about how do you get people like on board. Like a shared vision. Yeah. Uh, all, I guess what I mean by get aligned, right? And we want, 
one, two, three, four people all trying to do the same thing becomes to come, become a powerful multiplier effect if you get everybody working together. So we have the idea of a core leadership group uh, and some techniques and systems for getting people to, to work well together. And then once you have the, um, the clarity of vision and everybody on board, the question is, okay, now what are we going to do? In particular, what are we going to do differently? Because wh whatever it is we've decided our business is, it's going to be fundamentally about three things. Doing what we do, creating demand for what we do, or selling. Uh, and then growing and beginning to sell more and do more. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, you know, in terms of all those systems of the business, uh, what has to change different to do be done differently going forward to increase the odds that we'll be successful? So that that leadership group that's now aligned has to study what it's doing uh, and, and say this is what has to happen differently. And what that what that does is what we call plan change, because if we don't plan it, you know, things will change. Right. Why, why not get clear about what we want and do it in a systematic, orderly way? Right. And so we, have a, we, we say context matters is the truth. And what, what that tells you is that it's not just a, a list of things to do. It's a, it's a matter for each thing you want to do. Where, is it, where are things now? Why do they need to be different? What will they be like when we're done changing them? Mm -hmm. and how do we get there? And what will be hard about doing it? And what will be, what will be the enablers? And all of that becomes a story that if, if, if you take the time to put the story together, you dramatically increase the odds that you'll actually get from here to there. It sounds like you sort of have written the, what's going to happen, and then you just, then you just do it. live it. Yeah, then it's just a matter of doing it. Right. And the reality is most people go off annually to have an off-site, come up with the list, and then next year they come up with the same <laughs> list. <laughs> and so what we're doing is trying to break that cycle with yeah. some, some, some techni te techniques to actually Good. begin the change process at the first off-site. Now, once you have um, the... Um, you know the, what you want to do. One of the most important things we we have found in early stage organizations is an inflection in performance that comes when the leader finally figures out that it's okay to not know everything. Because mm -hmm. most leaders think, you know, Bill Gates and Larry Ellison and Steve Jobs sort of all did it all by themselves. The reality is each of them had quite a team uh, of of influencers, advisors, and on their leadership team. Right. They were just the visible ones out front that everybody saw. But most leaders don't know that, so they think it's a sign of weakness to not be open for it. I deal with that constantly in uh, constantly. CEO peer groups, right. right? And so one of the things we, we, we teach is that it's, oh, not, it's not just okay, it's important to be able to get good at getting input. Right. And, and to do that in a systematic and orderly way. And so we set up the leadership support structure to facilitate that. Right. Not, not just inside the organization, but I've in seen... In and out. Because right. you, you, you talk about outside influences, peer groups, peer groups boards, boards, advisors, all, all that. the above. Right. Coaches. Right. All critical. Um, then the other thing is what we call do and review. So that any anything that you're doing should be uh, to a plan and should be reviewed as you go against how things actually played out relative to plan. Mm. And the idea of having a, a governance structure, a governing board, or a review forum that's consistent in, in, in that you come back to every every say two three months. So here's what I said I was going to do. Here's what I actually did. Here's what happened. Right. Here's what I learned from that. Here's what I plan to do next. And then the advisors or the board members ask a lot of hard questions to push up your thinking, and give your best advice. And then it's up to you to take it from there and come back however many months later and tell the story again. Right. And if you do that iteratively and there's a plan in the background of things going on, lessons learned, actions taken, results, you can you can systematically get from anywhere to Sounds anywhere. Sounds like controlled growth. C controlled growth. Exactly. Excellent. We're talking with Peter D. He is principal at Atelevam. We have been talking about manage the lead, seven truths to helping you change to help you change the world. Uh, I'd like to ask you, you know, you said the key to leadership is to decide what kind of leader to be and stay consistent. Uh, how so, how does a leader, first of all, decide what kind of leader they want to be, and then how do they know if they're staying consistent well, with most, that? Well, most people are the leader they happen to be. It is whatever they end up doing. If it worked, they do it again, and they keep on doing it over and over again. And I remember consciously not thinking much about it and finding myself being what I would call a, a hero leader. There was a project, a crisis, you jump in, you put the Superman cape on, and incredible things happen, and it becomes successful. You say, wow, that was quite the rush. And you do that again and again, you say, wait a minute, I'm getting really tired of this, and it's hard to scale. I can't right. groom a bunch of supermen. Uh, I found that when I had some time and some good people to work with that if I went into a teacher model it was a little bit better but I was constrained there by what I knew if I had to know how to do uh, uh, if I was going to be leading like a teacher if I didn't know how to do it I'd be a learner first right, right. so it was kind of chaotic so then I realized wait a minute different 
situations call for different things. And around that same time, the Blanchard book came out on situational leadership. So right. I thought, ah, I get it. Um, it. It's more a matter of taking the situation, figuring out you know what kind of a leader it would be: iconic, hero, shepherd, sergeant, follow me, or what. Um, and so I had this um, this guy that was working for us named Ron Fell, who was a PhD in organization development, and he was our finance and HR guy. So I asked him if I'd had it right. I said, so is it the case that situational leadership is best? And he said, well, it's not a bad idea. It's just that um, it's actually good to have a preference because different people are better at different things, and it's not always possible to switch into just any mode. Yeah, nobody. And, yeah, nobody can do it. Can do everything. And. He said, it, 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 people on your team and in your organization and in your board look for and count on and value consistency. Because if you're a different animal every time That's they come right. in, you, you cannot be a good leader. So he said, have a preference, but tweak it you know, based on what you're trying to do, who you have to work with, how much time, money, and margin for error that you have. And that's when I realized that it makes a lot of sense. But it's a thoughtful, conscious decision. Right. And, and, and it's an obligation, responsibility of, of anybody, but a CEO in particular, to think through what's the situation, what have I got here, who am I, what do I like, what do I've got to work with, and, and decide consciously what kind of leader to be. And I think your point on consistency is absolutely true. I mean, if you, if you are not... Uh, predictable in some right. ways, the staff can get. Oh, you feel scared to death of you, right? And, and, and you're bored too. The authorizing environment doesn't like that either, right? It's it's not a good sign. I mean, you need to be adaptable and changeable and all right. those things, but y there needs to be some core there that we can work with, right? Right. All right, we're talking with Peter D. He's the principal at Atel Van, and we're talking about many different things. I've uh, been spending time in his book as well as his company and as well as his background. You know. We've kind of covered this, but I just want to kind of sit on it just for another maybe two minutes. Y you've described the leader's job as doing three things. Set direction, which you've talked about here on the radio show, aligning the resources, and then motivating action. So can, can, can you just bring it in like a, a two-minute soundbite for our audience to sort of take away from the Critical Mass radio show what you mean by those three? Well, set direction, you have to have somewhere you're specific that you're trying to get to. Otherwise, I would say you're a wanderer more than a leader. Right, you right. Gotta, you, I'm going there, and align resources. Well, unless you want to go there by yourself, your job is to find a follower, right? And, and if you think about it, the higher order position is really the first follower. Cause that's what makes a leader. <laughs> we can have a million leaders, but only if there's followers, right? Willing to follow you. Yeah, right. and then helping you to get others on board. Right. So no matter how great you are, if uh, you know if, if you don't have people wanting to do the same thing you you're trying to do, it's not going to work. And then if you have a bunch of really great, competent, super duper people but they don't have any incentive to lift even a finger to help, then you haven't motivated action, nothing's going to happen. Right. So, I mean, the physics are pretty straightforward. I'm going there, get everybody to see the same destination, and then kick everything into action towards that happening, and that's when you get a power right. of, a, of a leader. And that's a, it's so simple, but it, to me it's been almost like a mantra, set direction, align resources, motivate action. I just keep that going over and over in my head. I think that's a great, thank you for doing that. You did that one, well you left me a couple seconds left to say, what I see sometimes are leaders who see the action, which doesn't support in their mind the direction, right? And they, th and they don't go the other two steps up. They just look at the action and go, why are people doing this? Right. This isn't what I expected. Well, well, wait a minute, you can't blame them necessarily, <laughs> right? You gotta understand why they're doing what they're doing. Right, one of the biggest jobs, most important jobs a leader has is to be clear about what it is they want each person to do. Right. Earlier we said um, there was an something that happens at an inflection point about being open to input. The other one is realizing it's not about everybody helping you, it's about you helping everybody else to figure out what it is they're supposed to do and help them be successful doing it. And then you have a coach with a bunch of players playing position soccer instead of jungle soccer. Right. It's amazing. All right, we're talking with Peter D. We're going to take our next commercial break. But before we do that, I want to let you know that our audience demographic is 98% business owners and executives who listen to learn from the experiences and knowledge of our guests. If your firm is interested in reaching these top decision makers, then advertising on the radio show is the answer. Each month, our sponsors gain valuable exposure through their support of our program. And with our unique and exclusive prospect engagement program, Critical Mass for Business radio show delivers up to 23 warm prospects to each of our advertisers each year. If you'd like to learn more about our prospect engagement program, then contact Rose Chamara, our Vice President of Sales, at 951-515-4661. That's 951-515-4661. All right, we're going to take our last commercial break here on Critical Mass Radio Show. We're back with Peter D. for our last segment after these words from our commercial sponsors. Stay tuned. There's something positive about the word up. When things are looking good, they're looking up. 
When someone's down, you cheer them up. So how do you move up? Well, when it comes to getting your bachelor's or master's degree, there's one university that stacks up, Brandman University. Brandman is ranked by U.S. News and World Report as one of the nation's top 10 universities for online bachelor's programs. Brandman's online graduate programs in business and education also receive top honors. So look us up at brandman.edu. Brandman University. Move up. Smart Business Network is a business-to-business multimedia company providing insight, advice, and strategy for C-level executives of fast growth, middle market, and large companies. As one of the nation's largest publishers of local management journals, under the Smart Business name, Smart Business Network publishes 19 regional print editions, presents dozens of large and small-scale business conferences and award programs, and produces a vibrant interactive digital media presence. For more information, visit us at www.sbnonline.com. UPS Protection has been protecting systems in the U.S. against brownouts, blackouts, and poor quality power for over 25 years. We provide power protection systems, including UPS, lighting inverters, generators, and service for clients from coast to coast. We specialize in solving all your power needs. As a direct reseller of the best brands in the industry, including Liebert, Powerware, and APC, we can solve all your power protection needs. Protecting your power is our main goal. We offer on-site or depot repair of our critical equipment. To better serve your budget constraints, UPS Protection also offers both reconditioned and new products. This edition of Critical Mass Radio Show. I am your host, Rick Franzi. Peter D. is principal at Intelliban, and he is our focused and featured guest for today. Before we get back to the interview, I'd like to thank and acknowledge our listeners who download our radio show as a podcast. You've downloaded over 16,000 episodes during the last 30 days, and we here at the program appreciate your continued and growing support. Of course, all of our shows can be heard live here on octalkradio.net or rebroadcast anytime from iTunes, Stitcher.com, Spreaker.com, over 200 middle market business websites where our radio show is put on our past guest websites, as well as various business-oriented podcasting services. All right, got a couple questions for the time that we have left here, Peter D. I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you have outlined a support structure for success of the top executive. You know, in it, I mean, I thought it and I thought, wow, this is great. We need to talk about it on the radio show. You suggest the CEO have an outside executive group, maybe belong to a CEO peer group outside their firm. Would you take us through your thinking of kind of why you feel these are so important for a CEO? Yeah, I've come to conclude that CEOs who participate in peer forums help each other become great CEOs and better people. And there's a lot of things that add up to helping that happen. It's a place where a CEO does not have to behave as if she or he knows all the answers. And not only that, they can, but they actually have to be open to input. And it's okay to be wrong, it's okay to be vulnerable. In fact, if you can't do those, if you can't be open, you can't be vulnerable, you won't be in the group long. They'll kick you out. Right. They'll sniff that out and make it uncomfortable for you and you'll not be you not want to be there. But if you are, then incredible things happen. I mean one of the one of the greatest human needs as I've come to understand it is to be known and understood. And a CEO peer and a peer group really knows and understands each member. Mm-hmm. So you have a, a place to be home, right? It's big to, have, to have friends, people who understand you and know you. Uh, it's not a whole new adventure at every meeting. And so both in terms of personal and business goals, you know, in touch with the challenges you're facing and, and the loneliness and depression that accompanies most, many who are in the CEO role is alleviated. In fact, I think the incidence um, of depression and loneliness are lower for those CEOs in peer groups. Um, Also, the group holds each member accountable so that if a member starts saying or doing things that are out of sync with what they've said before or they're saying they want to do, they call it to your attention, which generally is a wake-up call to a CEO. Wait a minute, I said one thing, but I'm doing another. This this isn't adding up. The group's calling me on that. Oh, my goodness, i got to do something different. And that leads to better performance. So being in the group actually does lead to better performance. The other is whatever base of experience you have is now multiplied by the number of others in the group. So it's not just you and your experience. You've got 10 or 12 other guys there or women uh, who have lots of experiences that you can now tap into and draw on. And you celebrate each other's successes and commiserate with failures. 
and perhaps most importantly, open up each other's networks. So it becomes an, an overwhelmingly positive experience. Step away, get out of the madness of the day to day, take a break, get refreshed, get energy, go back. Right. You're a new person. Exactly. Uh, I've had members because I, I lead CEO peer groups here in Orange County who tell me they actually get energy. Yeah. From you the do. meeting, they you do. they go back ready to take on the rest of the day and the week's challenges. Yeah. And you and the, the rest of the company says, "Oh no, he's coming back. What's he get with him this time?" <laughs> yeah. But 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 they actually like that because you you do get refreshed and they know you need that. Right. And it, you said it. It's lonely at the top. You know that sounds like a trite. How could I, that possibly? I think be it's actually as lonely as you let it be. Okay. And that's that. That's the difference here. Is that we teach the CEOs to uh, change the equation by architecting around them in inter- inter- relationships with other people, with their peer group, their board, their, their advisors, their coach, their team. The change to that. It's, you're only lonely if you let yourself be lonely. And some people might choose to be lonely and hide behind that. Right. The reality is it doesn't have to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. It would be better if it's not. I think so. All right, we're talking with Peter D. He's principal at Intellivent. And uh, final question here on Critical Mass Radio Show. Uh, actually, I have two more, but the last one is your website and how do we buy your book. Right. But before we get there, you know, I love to ask the question, which we call the guiding principle question here on Critical Mass Radio Show. Loyal listeners know it. They actually wait for it sometimes uh, with certain guests, and I'm sure that's the case here with you. So of all the things you've learned in your business career, Peter, can you distill down what we call your guiding principle? In other words, your overarching philosophy as how you're leading and growing in Taliban and working with your clients. Well, I, I, I've given some thought to it, and I think that ultimately it kind of goes back to in high school I had this existential phase, and then throughout life, I've struggled with, you know, why are we here? Why am I here? What am I trying to do here? And I think uh, ultimately, you want to be true to yourself. And you know, Polonius and Hamlet says, "To my own self, be true." Damien in Hess in the existential doc, uh, book says, "You know, live in accord with the inner promptings of your true self." Why is that so very difficult? E.E. Um, e. Cummings even says, "You know, have the courage to grow up to be who you really are." So all of those things are really sort of personal uh, fulfillment, knowing yourself and being who you really are. And I think a great leader helps people come to terms with what they're good at, what they like, and what they want to do. It helps bring those into alignment. I mean, Steve Jobs and Daniel Goldman, who's the uh, um, the emotional intelligence guy, and a bunch of others went off uh, to India and studied under the under a yogi, uh, the guru. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think what the guru did is take time, get to know them, and then give them permission to be who they really were. Mm. And these guys have gone off and done some incredible things. And I think a great leader does that with people. It helps, he helps, she helps people see who they are, what they're good at. It helps them decide to want to do that which they're in line to do and right. to leave a fulfilled life. It, it, it's a, uh, a power position of being the CEO business owner. I, I, I ask my clients and others in my community, how many people do you have to have in your company before the conversation in the room changes when you're no longer in the room as the CEO? And in my experience, that number is three. Right, it's you and two other people. Right. And so from a very early stage in your company, as the leader, you have to remember they see you slightly differently, right? It's your company, right. maybe. And so you have, to, you have to be the one to n- normalize the power right. equation and make, it co- make them comfortable and feel safe to be themselves. Starting with yourself. It's starting with yourself. Right. And it's, not, it's a lot easier to say this than it is to do it. <laughs> and uh, it's, a life's, it's a life's work. Most people, I think, spend their whole lives trying to actually come to terms with this. Right. But I, I have a bias that says entrepreneurs and people who are scaling the business have a better opportunity to be themselves at work than a middle manager in a large corporation who sort of has, you know, maybe a couple degree, less degrees of freedom. And that's why I think the le- part of the leader's job is to help that happen with the people in the organization. They want to play the, the, the enlightened guru, the role the enlightened yogi guru who helps people do that because it, it turns out people will perform better last longer you know, do greater things if they're not in alignment and you can help that happen as a leader right because um, there's tons of research that suggests that the experience that you have at work you take home with you as an employee right and you can't shut that switch off on the drive home and and so you're actually doing something as a leader not just for your employee for at world. work but right. for themselves right which then dominoes into their family and the their world. children and the right. world. So there you go. We brought it full circle, didn't yeah. we, Peter D? <laughs> All right. So someone says, so if you want to change the world, <laughs> here we there go. you go. Buy the book. Right. Let's start with the book. How does someone find your book? Where would they go to buy it? You can go to Amazon uh, and, and you'll find it there. You, you can uh, just go to Amazon and ask for Manage to Lead. Put my name in. You'll come up either way. Also, that's available in electronic, digital, interactive, digital content management form from a company called Inkling. So if you go to inkling.com, how do you spell that? I-N-K-L-I-N-G. 
And if you go to Inkling and sign up, register, uh, you can get at the book that way as well. And the advantage of that yeah, I was ask is, you. is that it's, uh, it's interactive digital content, so it's on your phone, your pad, your PC, um, and it's all connected, so it's all the same version okay. uh, on all three devices. And whenever I update it, which I do regularly, uh, you'll get a free, it's free downloads. Wow. So if you buy the book, it's, it's a little bit, you know, you can flip through it and share it with others, but the electronic version is wherever you are. Right. So I find, I find it good to have both, but I think students in the new generations of professionals tend to like the electronic version because they can have it anywhere they are. Right. Um, and and uh, you go either way. So Inkling or in a Amazon. And if they want to learn more about your firm, how do they find Intelliven online? Ch check out Intelliven.com. Uh, I N T E L L I V as in Victor E N dot com. It's features a blog, which is a gateway to a lot of content. There's okay. um, templates and tools and cases and and um, over you know, a couple hundred blog blog posts. I blog every you know two or three times a month, roughly. Usually, what happens is something happens in a, with a client or a case or something's come up. I help with the case and draw on my files of, on repositories of knowledge and, and help with that and then that's hey, this is something others might like to see so I, po so I post it hmm. and then eventually a collection of those become part of the book so that's the way it works uh, you can you can send a note to uh, Intelliven at Intelliven.com and we'll see it you can reply to any post or page okay. and we'll see that and get back to you um, there's also a backgrounder on the template page where you can fill out a form that will let us know uh, what situation you're currently dealing with and what you're trying to do that might need some help, and, and you can just send that into Intellivent at Intellivent.com, and we'll get that as well. Okay, so uh, by way of review, if they're a middle market CEO running a successful company but knows that her company can be larger, just quickly tell me the type of companies that you are most likely to be able to help. If you're in the 20 person size company wanting to be Say a hundred or two hundred on the way to maybe even a thousand, right? You want to, you want to, you're you're small. You want to get big, and you want to create value that has potential to grow even beyond that to scale. Okay, uh, that's kind of perfect. Um, and you can get to twenty to fifty million just by sheer desire and drive and intellect and energy from the CEO and the top team. But if you want to become, you know, hundreds of millions, uh, thousands of people, then you, you 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 it's hard to figure it on your own. Some people can do it, but it's a it's a hard way to go. Why not leverage? the learnings of others, and that's where we come in. Great. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I'm glad we had you as our focus guest. We got to spend the entire hour with you, Peter D. I've enjoyed it. Continued success. Thanks for being a friend of the program, and sure. welcome to the Critical Mass community. Thanks for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank our advertisers, who without which we wouldn't be able to bring the show to you today. They are Bramman University, Center Club, Commercial Bank of California, Decision Toolbox, MBN Design, Smart Business Magazine, S&H Rubber, Succession Strategies, our longest uh, sponsor, Tone Software, and UPS protection. I'd like to thank the team that works behind the scenes to make Critical Mass Radio Show such a successful, enjoyable experience for you, our audience, for me as the host, and hopefully for our guests as well. Until our uh, next show, I'm your host, Rick Franzi, saying I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction. <laughs>